Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica with Memory Box Candle Co. And I make videos all about the journey of starting a candle business. In today's video, I thought that I would make a pros and cons of the Digiboil Wax Melter. So we have had these for years now. I wanna say it's been probably two years that we have been using these instead of using the Presto Pots, which is what I kind of had trained transitioned into after the double boiler method. So when I first got started with candle making and my business, I started off using the double boiler. Then I moved over into a Presto pot and I believe the Presto pot could hold around eight to 10 pounds of wax in it. And then we moved over to the digi boil. So I wanted to go over some pros and cons of having these wax melters. So basically, because we love them a lot, overall, I would say that they are a pro depending on where you are in your business. So if you have a lot of candles that are needing to be made, for instance, if you are finding yourself with the Presto Pot going through that and having to wait and reheat more wax during your wax um, or during your candle making sessions, then it may be time to invest and look into getting um, something larger that can hold a larger amount of wax. So these Digiboils can hold, I believe around 50 pounds of wax, and um, that can take you through a full candle making session or maybe two candle making sessions, just depending on how many candles you are pouring at once. So that is definitely a huge pro and probably one of the biggest pros when it comes to these digi boils. And um, it's just the fact that you can hold so much wax in there. And when you turn it on, it just starts heating up right, of, right away and melting down all of that wax. Now, of course, during that process, um, it does take a little bit longer to heat up than let's say a smaller Presto pot. So that is definitely something to take into consideration as well. Um, something that I also love about the Digiboils, let me go ahead and turn this on over here. So I would turn this on too, so you can see the lights lighting up over here. So everything is digital. So it's in both Fahrenheit and Celsius. You can change it if you'd like to. And then you're able to adjust the temperature and be able to um, adjust it digitally. So that's a little bit different than the Presto Pots where you have the dial. And I personally like the digital aspect of it a little bit better than using the dial. I feel like it is a little bit more precise. Um, however, something about the digital part, even though you are able to adjust it digitally, you have to be careful because the temperature of the wax inside is actually different than the temperature that it's reading on there. So a lot of times we have the digi boil set to between 172 and 176 or 178, depending on how much wax is in there. Um, and uh, that will have a different temperature of the actual wax inside. So if we have it set to the 170s, it's really in the 190s inside of the Presto Pot and can sometimes get even hotter than that. Again, depending on how much wax is in there. So the higher up you have the wax filled up, the more regulated that the temperature can be and the lower it gets in here, the hotter it gets. So the less amount of wax, the hotter it's going to get. It's going to get hotter quicker and it's going to um, kind of adjust the temperature as you are making candles. So I don't really know if there's a way to make candles with any kind of wax melting device as of right now that is going to be absolutely perfect with regulating the temperature perfectly no matter how much wax is in there and as you go through the candle making process. I really think that in everything that I've used, it has to be a continuous checking of what the temperature of the wax is in there. I actually use a laser thermometer to go up inside once it's on and I check and see what the temperature is. Now, something to note about using these laser thermometers is that they are not 100% accurate. So if you're not as comfortable or as familiar with using or with making candles and temperature regulation, I recommend getting a probed thermometer or one of those actually that you could actually leave in there. That's something that we actually need to get 
is let's say a little probe or something that you can leave in there and it will constantly let you know what the temperature of the wax is so you don't have to constantly go up and check it. So that's a little helpful tip for you, but this is just kind of what we've always done. And then over here on this side, we do have different watts and everything that we use for candle making. And uh, we typically have it on the 500 watt setting for the waxes that we use. And then the very last thing that I am going to bring up is actually the fact that the newer Digiboils, um, I believe it's the second generation of Digiboils, um, they were getting a lot more complaints with their uh, melting pots. And um, I believe it was because on here, it throws an E3 code and it just starts blinking E3. And we have actually experienced that only with the second generation of Digiboil. So I don't, I, I didn't even know that there were different generations to be completely honest. Um, but I think that this one is a generation one. This one is a gen one. This is for our uh, tart wax that we use. But this one for our beeswax, I got more recently than those ones. And I believe that this one is a gen two, and this is the only one that throws up an E3 code. So um, what we typically do when it does that was we just let it do its thing, it recorrects itself, and then it starts heating up. Um, we personally haven't had any other further uh, issues with it at all. Pretty much the only thing that it does is it just it just starts blinking E3, it recorrects itself, and then it's totally fine and starts heating up. So I would say that overall, um, we love having these melters. They do pull a lot of power, so you do have to know that. They are going to pull a lot of power. So we have multiple different heavy duty surge protectors for both of them so that that's going to protect it. And uh, we have had a couple of different surges happen. Um, and we just have to, Chris just does the breaker thing. <laughs> and, um, but overall, I mean, we're really happy with them. They make the candle making experience, especially with how many candles that we pour at once, um, they really do help with being able to pour a lot of candles um, at the same time. So that really does help. But beyond that, I would say that if you're contemplating on whether or not a Digiboil is right for you, I would say to ask yourself, you know, if you are using something like a Presto Pot and you find yourself making so many candles to where you're having to refill your Presto Pot and then wait around for it to melt down and then you get started again, um, maybe you have to do that another time, then it could be a good time for you to get one of these so that you can hold more wax in there. And it's just going to make things a lot more efficient and a lot faster for you. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to leave it a big thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to follow me over on Instagram at Memory Box Candle Co. And I will see you in my next video.